one shot. Okay. Okay, you watch for people showing up. Hello, Brandon. What's going on, Brandon? Sorry, I missed who the first person was. Serving from my home. Hey, Lacey, how are you? Thanks for coming by. We're staying up in the mountains right now. We're at, uh, we're actually near a river, which is painful because it's closed for steelhead fishing. We can't do any fishing, but we're here for our mom's birthday weekend so we're celebrating and we're just taking some time we got our leaders that'd be a good time I was first floor right there you go that's right <laughs> sorry I caught it just as it was going away so we thought it'd be a good time to get caught up on some leaders and talk fishing gear if you guys want or just hang out and chat whatever you guys want to do Going on, Flow Rider. Thanks for coming by. Got Oops. Tend to the mountain of snow. Ooh, we're supposed to get some snow, but it's not showing up. Got some leaders. After sitting through all those, mercy. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you bought some too, Murder Inc. While you were watching them. Might as well make yourself helpful. Fluorocarbon leaders. I stopped painting to join in. Oh, What's nice. up, Mike? Thanks for showing up, man. Appreciate it. We're just getting some gear set up. Sweet. Tightline Nation, what's going on? Jamaica girl, thanks for sh showing up. How do we get the, uh, do you guys know how to get the text to not disappear so fast when people comment? Cool. Do you guys know how to do that? Because it just shows up for like three seconds and then it disappears. going on Grant just read it fast I guess huh yeah watch your computer with the sound off we're doing this on a uh, iPad yeah right now use a desktop that makes sense it's if I go live okay yeah. so sounds like it's better to go live from a laptop than it is a tablet Good to know. But we don't have one here, so we'll do the best we can. You guys like the scenery? Out the back window. The Irish train guy, hey, what's going on? Thanks for showing up. You'll have to touch the chat. I used another phone with the... Well, that's a good idea. That's good by. Show up in the chat. I can't do it. You gotta do it on your phone because I'm logged into the. Uh, let me see. When do you use your phone? Live stream? Yep. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. Jerry's gonna. Maybe. What kind of trees are those? They're tall trees. <laughs> and they're green because it's Oregon. Uh, I don't know my trees very well, but they're. Do you know what kind they are? No. Pine? There's two different Pine. kinds out there. Pine or fir? Give me both. How about that? I don't think I can get on there. Not a lot of deciduous stuff up here. It's all needles. Tallus Oregonus. 
You said it, man. That's the one. PDX Fishing, what's up, man? Thanks for showing up. We gotta hook up with you sometime. You're just down the road. Keep skirting around. Looks like oak or beech wood. Hmm. Could be. Do you guys use 14 millimeter beads? Sometimes. If I fish them. Yeah, it kind of varies. Which size you're using depending on the water. If it's high and muddy, go big or go home. I'm out here with Boneyard Bass and doing a catch and cook. Nice. Were you guys, are you guys at the jetty again? You guys have been hitting the jetty pretty hard. Y'all look cold and wet. Nope. <laughs> We're inside, dry inside, man. It is cold and wet outside, though. It's raining. It's about 40 degrees. Supposed to drop down into the low 30s and start snowing at some point. Cloudy here in 60. Oh, that sounds pretty good. How long in liters do I use? So these are my... Uh, From here to here. Yeah. That's how long. Bead liters, I'm usually running about 18 inches to 24 inches. Drift fishing liters, maybe a little bit longer. Maybe around 30 inches. But... Uh, Look at this guy here. Boom. What's that? Team Matt, Charlie. Hi. Hi. Ferocious animal. He is needy for sure. Precision angling. What's going on, Precision? Thanks for coming by. If you guys don't know each other in there, Feel free to check out each other's channels, see what's going on. Where we fish, they limit, yeah. Um, that's probably for snagging purposes. We have a couple of rivers around here that do have... Anti-snagging rules. Yeah, leader restrictions and hook sizes. Actually, we have one river that we like to fish. And even for salmon, they won't let you use anything bigger than a size two hook, which is really annoying. But enough people have ruined it for everybody else that you can't use regular salmon size hooks, which you would normally use like three or four off. It's more enforced for mud sharks. I don't even know what a mud shark is. Hmm. I do model train review. Nice Irish train guy. I'm hoping that. Uh, us doing this live stream will bring in a few other people that you guys don't normally see. You get to check each other out. Can't use trebles on those. Yeah. King salmon is a mud shark in New York. Hmm. Okay. That's weird. But I'm down with that. What's up, Murder Inc.? Everybody knows Murder Inc. That guy's <laughs> a legend. Just can't believe he showed up to our live stream. You going over the time? You just tying. I'm just tying. Oh, okay. <clears throat> you guys want to know how to tie this exact knot that I'm tying? We have a video for that. Or I can try to explain it, but I don't think you guys can see anything. Really? Here's what I'm using right now: 10 pound T line fluorocarbon. You can get the fluorocarbon coated leader, but as I understand it, that stuff can break off, and you kind of lose the benefit of the fluorocarbon. So I always go with 100% fluorocarbon. I've used different ones, Maxima, T-Line. I got uh, Seaguar in here. You guys can see that. I think I took out the label. So it's all backwards, isn't it? It is. Is it to us or is it backwards to everybody trying to read stuff? Probably everybody. Can Probably you guys everybody. read this or is it backwards to you guys? Because it's backwards to us, but I think it's, I think it's legit for people watching. This is what we're tying. I'm a bead guy myself. Jerry's more of a drift fisherman, but I only bead fish when I have to. 
And that's because I don't want to lose as much gear as I'm going to if I drift fish. If I can drift fish, I do. Not backwards, good. So you can read that. So these are my bead hooks that I like to use, size four and black. Helps that they're black because they, they hide a little bit better in the water. Fish zero in on the bead. Yep. Cool, thanks for the response. Here's my drift fishing hooks. I'm not completely partial to owner, but they do work really well. I've used brads in the past, but... Uh, Kamikatsu is another good one. Um, I got a package of brads here just because they're cheap. I've had a couple break on me um, on steelhead, but not very often. I think I had uh, one of the more expensive hooks uh, um, break on me too and kind of went, well, eh, might as well just save the cash. So. so here's my leader. Here's how I measure it. Take a spool, run it out, hold it on my shoulder here. When it hits the spool, that's where I cut it. Owner is a great brand. Yeah. I agree. It is a great brand. It's it's hard to go, it's hard to go wrong with owners. Have you guys been out doing any fishing or hunting? I know Murder Inc. just went crow hunting. Do you eat the crows? I saw mixed reviews on some people say, no, we don't center pin. We're straight up uh, spin, spin and reel and level line, yeah. I've yeah, never even. You do eat the crows. How do you cook crow? You're not just being funny about eating crow and stuff, right? Yeah, see, <laughs> Thailand Nation says he eats crow daily. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Here comes one of Jerry's kids and a dog. And it. Oh, that's not good. Nope. I might have to leave for a second. Carry a blind dog back downstairs so she doesn't die trying to get back down there. The feathers taste awful, though. <laughs> yep. I haven't found a bird yet that I like to taste the feathers. I think it's probably the uh, the tar and the oil that comes off the roads that probably makes the feathers taste bad, though. We like to pre-tie. Saves us a little bit of time on the river. Plus, once your hands get cold, it makes things a little difficult. So, we uh, here's what we like to use. We showed you the leader fluorocarbon hook. We usually run size two for drift fishing, unless I'm fishing whole shrimp, then I go for like a one knot, so that uh, as I thread the shrimp on, it can make the bend. I usually use Globo yarn. I like white. It's probably my go-to favorite color for drift fishing. And here's my little corky carrier, a little Ziploc bag. I can see what I'm going after. Lasts forever. Nice and easy. Little thing I like to do. I cut my yarn into like two inch pieces. Then I cut that up, so pull that apart into quarters. Just divide it here. You can, once you start getting into it, you'll see how it comes apart. One, two, a couple more pieces here. When I pre tie, I'll cut them back after I tie an overhand knot in my egg loop. And you cut the yarn about the back of the bend of the hook. When I'm out on the river, sometimes I cut them with my nippers and the uh, rest of the time I just leave it. So what else? The other thing I like to do when I'm not running... Uh, yeah, amazing how Eastern steelheaders fish different than us West guys. You know, I... Um, it's funny you mention that because I just started tying and using spawn sacks over here and nobody's really doing that but they're really effective and uh, I like it because I can just buy a jar of pot skis or something in a pinch and tie up some spawn sacks 
and not have to use any of our cure grow or anything like that if we haven't gotten anything for a while, which has kind of been the case. There you go. Nothing crazy. Drop a corky on there, or if I don't want to fish corkies. So all we use in the Midwest is spawn sacks. Right there. Soft, plastic, or rubbery, bead chain looking egg deals. Just rip off a couple and drop them in your egg loop. Go. I've got video of a nice, bright chrome winter steelhead I got on the coast last year. Badger Farm Girl, thanks for showing up. Hey, do you East Coast guys use these pips, leader boxes? These things are amazing. I don't know how you guys store your leaders and stuff over there, but pretty much use those exclusively. And if you get in a pinch, dollar store curlers work pretty good actually for storing leaders. You pick up like a dozen of them for a dollar. Brown trout spawns favorite. Mm -hmm. Nice. We never really get brown trout. We have a few brown trout fisheries, but people kind of target them for trophies, but I don't think they really keep them and eat them or anything. Do they? Yeah. Do they? Pool noodle. Yeah. Hey, that's a good idea too. You get, what, like a six foot length for a couple bucks? I've heard uh, pipe insulation. Yep, pool noodles. Yeah, that's a good idea. My All side. about saving money. If Lacey's still in here, she should appreciate that. What else we got? I didn't bring any of my beads and stuff. But... Uh, I probably have a couple. Mostly just brought stuff for tying the leaders. Leader of the pack. I think, I think these are Spirit River. Got a little blood dot in there. I don't know if you can see it. I think these are 12 millimeter. And I picked up a few fish beads, just kind of a candy red color. I uh, haven't really fished them much, but I don't like fish beads much anyway, so that's probably why. I actually cut my teeth on steelhead fishing with flies. I don't do it nearly as much as I used to, but that's what got me started. On the Alsea River. Mm-hmm. You guys, we're staying in a house right now that's actually on the Sandy River. And it's brutal because we're above the deadline. You can't fish above the deadline. But it's running like hundred yards behind us. There's another one I have tried a little bit. Limited success, but it's also because I don't really fish it much. But pink worms. Do you ever log in with your phone? Uh, no, I pulled up our, our stuff. Good. We don't have a live feed on, on the app yet. And what? Ivy Arreno, hello, how are you? Thanks for coming by. We're hanging out at a rental house up in the mountains and uh, just hanging out, taking a break from family stuff and tying steelhead leaders, kind of getting things geared up. My dog is coming back. Charlie, come here, come here. on film come here <laughs> oh. this is my dog Charlie aka Kochuk he rides everywhere with me passenger side he is an ultimate road queen though I'm telling you right now this dog does not hunt does not fish barely likes to go out in the rain 
And he starts whining. Yep. But he's pretty cute. Just hunting. What's going on? Thanks for showing up. We're hanging out, tying leaders, kind of getting steelhead gear retooled in case we can never make it out again. Hopefully pretty soon. Are you not going to pull it up? Uh, I don't know if I can do it from on here. Hey, look, I can see us. Mm -hmm. It's weird. It is weird. It's a little I can delayed. see the... I can see the... You can see him? The chat now. Huh. Blake Outdoors, hey, how's it going? Thanks for coming by. I turned the volume off. That's annoying. <laughs> we use primarily sacks, beads, pink worms, and jigs. Yep, that's that's pretty much what we use too. Um, I'm almost exclusively beads and then drift fishing eggs if I can. Um, I've never caught a fish on a pink worm or I did catch one fish on a jig one time, but I tipped it with a sand shrimp tail. So in my opinion, that thing bit a sand shrimp tail, not a jig. Blake Outdoors says, I'm good. We have 18 inches of snow here. That's crazy. Where are you at, Blake? Heartland Nation got you, and you need one more. Come on. Tightline Nation must be close to a landmark or something. Change just hunting. I'm already subbed you. <laughs> See who all is in here. Precision angling. Grant. Backwards. So the people keep popping in and then popping right back out. Mm -hmm. Even with Charlie on screen. This is my ace. I already got tight line nation. He's one away from 400. Nice tight line. We got you cool. too. What float do you use? Oh, man. I'll use anything, to be honest. Uh, like clear drift style or the foam style, fill style. Mostly all uh, sliding bobbers, though. Don't use a lot of fixed floats for steelhead over here unless it's um, really shallow stuff. And you don't really have enough room to slide a bobber up and down. Who is that, Charlie? <laughs> Who is that? Man, I'm still blown. I know. I lost the sweatshirt. We got the windows open and everything. I wonder if they turn the heat up down there. Probably. We have six people in here. We had eight thumbs up. At least we're ahead on that count. Right. Charlie goes fishing with you too? No, Charlie does not go fishing with me. I was explaining earlier, this guy right here is a road queen. He loves to travel, he loves to ride around in my truck, but uh, doesn't go outside very much. He's an inside dog. He gets his, uh, so he's a cockapoo, and he's got this long, like thin hair. And so when he goes outside, he just basically soaks everything up like a mop. It gets pretty bad. Although, he is a good hunting breed. Jerry's telling me. Yep. Uh, Tightline Nation, you guys on Instagram? No, we're not on Instagram. We've kind of talked about maybe getting on some of the other stuff. We had a Facebook page for a while, but we weren't using it, so we deleted it. My little daughter thinks we should do uh, Instagram. She'd love to help us out, so maybe. Yeah, we might we might look into Instagram in the near future. Oh yeah, can't get dirty. <laughs> yeah. Plus, if he gets if he gets super 
muddy or dirty and stuff, then my wife will make me give him a bath when he gets home. That's no fun either. Crankbait crisis. Hey guys, I am one from 700 now. I have lost five. Yep. Congratulations on being one away from 700, but yeah, you'll uh, just get used to the ups and downs with your subscribers, man. It, they come and go. Yeah, it fluctuates all the time. People will get super excited, I think, and like subscribe to a whole bunch of channels and those big live streams, and then later on, they if they don't visit your channel, I think they get kicked off or whatever, but here you go. Tightline Nation says he got you. So uh, now you got 700. That's pretty cool. Congratulations, buddy. Just keep working at it. <laughs> Odd, I got you already, Crankbait Crisis, but haven't watched you. Yep. So, yeah, guys, if you, if you haven't recognized each other, at least go check the channels out and see what they're doing and if you like what they're doing then support them and uh, even if it's not really your your niche or whatever then you know sometimes it's fun to go check them out anyway because you never know what you might actually find interesting and like serving my home she does a lot of DIY um, I think is really interesting and she does it on a budget which is really cool Back. I got purged and clicked you again. We'll watch you. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of people got purged. My personal channel got purged. Mm -hmm. Zappy Gaming says hello, greetings from Scotland. Zap Gaming. Nice. Thanks for showing up from Scotland, man. That's pretty sweet. I don't think we've ever had anybody from outside the U.S. really support us. We're just hanging out and chilling. Nathan likes drums. Hey, what's going on, buddy? Thanks for coming by. Really appreciate you guys coming in and hanging out with us. We're just having fun. Three, four, five. Hi, Olivia. I am from Holland. Oh, cool. Ivy is from Holland. Nice. Sweet. We're learning all sorts of stuff. What you doing? We're doing a live stream. Ooh, look at that. Sure, people are watching us as we talk. You guys perfect a center pin and it will blow your mind. Ooh. It's pretty much just a fly rod, isn't it? With a free spooling reel. Is that what center pin is? Is it? Yeah. Do center pins There's no gears. have a drag, or are they just free spooling? Oh, this sucks! I can't get these. I can't get double. Tough from here. Mm -hmm. Don't lose that one. Double bag. Mom wanted to cut it and say, "Did you?" Hi, little girl. Her back. Okay, so you did. You can do it. Mostly, she can give her a little bit more. Okay. No drag free school sure for float fishing. I've seen a lot of guys using them, but never tried one, never even held one, so I don't even know. What what length of this is the rod that you use for center pin? That's good. Yarn. Yarn. Does it turn dark? Maybe. Nope. Lydia, please don't. We got a lot of expensive stuff. That's including the iPad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and okay. Thirteen foot. But 10 on up is good. Man, that's a long rod for... I guess that helps keep your line up off the water, though. Yeah, what line do you use? Is it a, a non-tapered braid type line? Is it a shooting line? Is it a, is it a mono? Mm-hmm. 
Hey, Tightline Nation, if you're still there, what kind of line are you using on your center pin? You guys run mono or braid or like a fly line or what? Oh, call outdoors just went live. Cool. Why? There's more stuff to do down there. Is that a puzzle? No. No, I don't know what that is. Puzzle. Yep, there's a puzzle. Okay, you want to take it downstairs? Sure. See if anybody else wants to try it. it says. See if puzzle? they're up for the challenge? It says 8 pound puzzle. suffix high vis or 10 pound oh, yeah. mono. So just curious, why do you use, why don't you use a floating line when you're center pin fishing, like a braid or something? Secret. That stuff right there, everybody needs that in their gearbox for steelhead for sure. Whether you're drift fishing or bead fishing. Bye. I fished the Salmon River in New York and braid is looked down upon since it can cut through waders. Is that because you guys have so many people in the river at one time that if a fish takes off up, up or downstream and it rubs on someone's waders, it's going to cut them? I guess then that's what that means. Try to plug this thing in real quick. Yes, he says. battery life is in it, but we don't have to worry as long as that thing is blinking. Beep, 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 beep. That would kind of suck to lose power right in the middle of it. Yes. Okay, so I guess that's a good problem to have, though. You have that many fish in your rivers that everybody wants to fish for them. I guess you, is it easy to like spread out and fish different holes? Or are you guys all fishing the same stretch and shoulder to shoulder kind of stuff? Charlie. People keep popping in, but nobody's saying anything. Mm -hmm. If you guys jump in, say hi so we know who's Who's there? Are you in there too? Yeah. Okay, so we have six and two of them are us. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Great. Maybe you should ask questions. Outdoorsman, hey, what's going on? I see five watching now. We're just hanging out. We were tying leaders and hey. nope. gearing up for steelhead fishing and stuff. Hey. What are you up to?
We appreciate everybody that's jumping in here, and we appreciate all the thumbs ups. We have a eleven thumbs up. I'm your biggest fan. And <laughs> seven people. Who is that? Jellyfish. I'm your biggest fan. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Where are you from? Outdoorsman, I don't fish much. That's all right. You, uh, I think you're the one that I see all your trapping videos. Okay. Check traps, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so Releasing a possum. Yeah, he does a lot of, Outdoorsman does a lot of trapping. Hmm. Trapping would be fun. We don't, we tried trapping uh, Nutria and stuff a while back, but. We weren't very good at it. All right, see you, Ivy. Thanks for coming by, Ivy. We really appreciate it. Hope you have a good uh, night. <laughs> I like to fish with my family. Oh, nice. That's giant. Huh? Oh, jellyfish is? Yeah. Yeah, Jillian. Oh, well, you better be our biggest fan, Jillian. <laughs> Here's my other go-to from not good fishing. Number four, blue fox, blue body, silver blade. Mm-hmm. So now we have three people in here. Mm-hmm. And six people total. <laughs> Bluefish coho, king, steelhead, browns, Atlantic salmon. Most average twenty to thirty pounds. That sounds terrible. <laughs> That I am really, I'm actually really jealous of you guys' fishery over there. They get tangled in the legs. They say braid cuts through. Well, Hola. I guess that kind of makes sense. It's almost like a, a Jillian, really fine if you wire. Are watching, you better play hide and seek with me again. Mm -hmm. I'm always watching. But our our fishery over here is struggling right now. We're getting really bad salmon steelhead runs. We're hoping it changes in the next year or two, but you guys seem to have it dialed in over there. Mm -hmm. These are great guys. guys. That's Olivia, Jerry's daughter. Wait, you haven't even told me told them about me yet? Nope. <gasps> what? Steel and Browns average eight to twelve. 20 pound considered trophy. I think Jillian's That's still watching because last time. Over here, we have um, some nice brown fisheries, How but I'd that? say like anything over five pounds is considered a trophy over here, right? That's where you go. I State record is big. Many. Yeah. State record, I think, is around 30. I want to be with them. <laughs> Charlie loves you. I don't know if you can do that. Soon. <laughs> Yeah, <coughs> Are you using this anymore? Um, sometimes. You want to use it? No. no. I'm just going to put it down just in case. Knocked over or something? Yeah. Aggressive dog attack or something like that? Mm -hmm. Well, I think everybody that's in here is our family now. <laughs> How are we down to? Four. Four. Three of us, one more. <clears throat> probably tight line nation is probably still there. What? He got kicked off his channel. Who's that? Tight line nation. Check out some of our posts, Tyler Nation. Yeah, I'm just looking at your channel, man. We've been subscribed to you for a while, and I just pulled it up and had to redo it again. That's frustrating. Your daughter's got a cleaning music playlist on 
my channel. <laughs> Joey? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds about right. That's my mom in the background. Well, they can't yeah. see her. The yeah. camera's facing this way. Yep. Come on, show your face. <laughs> Hi, yeah, we'll definitely have to check your stuff out. Tight line. Sounds interesting. I'm such Facebook. a good actor. Mm. Mm. I think Olivia needs her own YouTube channel. Yeah. I think so. Let's look at her tiny little body. Probably more popular than ours. Mm hmm. You can channel all that energy into all these live streams and flossing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> flossing and slime. Slime. Louie, do you like to fish? Not really. Not just go out there in the cold. Not always. You can just fish in the summertime. Mm -hmm. You ready to start hunting? No. Uh -huh. Ready to start hunting? No. You like to shoot a bow? True North Angler, hey, what's going on, man? We're just hanging out. We're up in the mountains, and we've just been tying leaders and getting geared up. Hanging out. Try Angler is awesome. Who's Try Angler? Come by and see you and hang out. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Oh, True Angler. True North Angler? Man, I better check that too. Okay, still subscribe to him. That's frustrating. That's me, he says. True North Angler, are you a center pin guy too? Up there in the Great Lakes. Saturday hangout. Just looking at his recent post. Starting in cold December. Olivia, it'd be nice to him. If he's chewing on that bow and he might nip at you. Hello. I am definitely, I have three pins. Center pin guys. You know how to do it. Might be worth checking out. I don't even know. I don't even know if I've seen center pins in the stores up here. They oh, do. I think so. I've never been looking for them or anything. So true north angler, um, are you a bee guy or a sponsack guy? How do you prefer to fish your center pins and what kind of floats are you using? And you guys use split shot, right? I think I always noticed that you guys are using split shot when you're waiting mm -hmm. your sliding sinkers. They're popular around the Great Lakes here. Yeah, we're learning more about that. We always use uh, spinning gear and level winds for all of our steelhead fishing. And we use inline weights. Do you have an inline weight? Uh, probably. What's an inline weight? We use inline weights for all of our weights. We don't use split shots. Hmm. I run floats with split shots and beads. Yeah. That's crazy. We don't... Nobody here uses split shots to space out there. I do fish spawn sacks sometimes, too. Yeah, so this is... This is the kind of weight that we use for our float fishing. You see that? an inline weight and it's got a built-in swivel on both sides so it can spin and so you just tie your main leader off of this end and tie your leader off the bottom about a 20 inch leader and then you probably run a bead off of that those are for big rivers and fast water yeah I don't know what you consider big river and fast water, but most of the time we're fishing at least probably four to six feet. And walking pace is usually what we're shooting for. We'll fish up to like 12 feet. 
for steelhead. Deeper and slower for most of our salmon stuff. They usually fish creeks. Yeah, we don't have a lot of creeks. I guess on the coast we have some, but mm -hmm. we don't fish a lot of creeks for steelhead around here. Usually just uh, big rivers. Small rivers on the coast. North Fork and Allen. Tightline Nation says he makes his own floats. What do you make your own floats out of? Cork. I tried making some floats one time out of a uh, spray insulation foam and coffee straws. <laughs> Didn't work. Bad. Just couldn't get the shape right. Works best. It's a balsa float. Balsa wood. Balsa wood. Is that like a cork? A yeah, really lightweight wood. Really lightweight wood? I think so. Are balsa floats fixed or slip bobbers? I also use Drennan floats. You know what a Drennan float is? That I do not. What's a Drennan float? Is that just a brand or is that a, is that a different style altogether? Have to look that up. Drennan floats. Huh? You can take it down there, but you need to ask Aunt Alicia if you can open it. That's our brand new game. Okay. Balsa and cork video coming. Nice. Cool. I'd be interested to see that. While you're at it, why don't you box up a bunch of those steelhead over there and ship them our way. <laughs> so we have something to fish for. Oh, man. What you got? Yep, True North Angler, we're in Oregon. We're in uh, Northwest Oregon, to be exact. Portland area. Drennan is a brand, top quality line and good floats. Sweet, we'll definitely have to check it out because we never heard of them. They keep us in the dark over here sometimes. Also can be fixed or slip. Do you paint the balsa floats then too so they're high vis or you just fish them natural color? What kind of species do you guys like to fish for? Ha ha ha. Loaded question. Everything. Yeah, we'll fish for anything that we can. Uh, our favorite, definitely steelhead and salmon. Knew it. But I was saying earlier that our salmon and steelhead runs are really bad this last couple years. Uh, we haven't been able to catch very many, so we've been doing a lot more trout fishing. Surf perch is coming up. We're we do a lot of that. surf perch fishing. We fish off the jetties for rockfish and lingcod. We do a lot of sturgeon fishing. We have a really good catch and release sturgeon fishery. Shad fishing. Shad, we get American shad, which are different than what you guys get over there, I think. You guys get the- um, Red fins and gizzards, I think. Yeah. So we catch, uh, catch those. Fish we'll fish for warm water stuff Scoop. from time to time, <laughs> but that kind of gets down on the list a ways, like bass. We used to do more bass fishing than we do now, but. It's yeah. just a matter of time. We don't have a lot of free weekends anymore and evenings. So when we do, we, we choose to 
prioritize and go for salmon still hit if we can. What's the biggest sturgeon you guys caught? They get big up in British Columbia. I think so. we've each got about a 10 footer, haven't we? Yeah, we've each caught, caught one about 10 feet. Come here. And, uh, From the bank. We catch a lot of them that are four and five foot is probably average. I'll be down a little bit. Yes, I paint floats. I also paint my own beads. I bake my own clay beads and pour plastic beads. That's pretty cool, man. That's cool. I like that you're doing all that stuff yourself. You do it to save money or you do it just so you can customize or just because you're into it and you like to DIY stuff. True North Angler, have you ever caught a sturgeon? Uh, Olivia, we'll only do this for about another 10 minutes and then we'll come back down. <laughs> oh, there's the other one. You want to come say hi to? <laughs> We got that figured out now. <laughs> no, never been out west. You guys don't have any sturgeon on the east coast at all? Different kinds, I think. I think that lake one. Lake sturgeon? I think so. Let us know if that's true or not. Oh, uh, Muskie Hans does some sturgeon fishing from time to time, but I think you're right. I think it's lake stuff. 10 foot, wow, yeah. Honestly, uh, it was super cool to say that you've caught one, but I I don't really care to catch another one that big. Charlie, <laughs> lots of salmon is still hit though. Yeah, you guys, I'm jealous of you guys' fishery over there. You guys catch a lot. Rare and smaller in the Niagara River. Got my dog. Uh, hey, <clears throat> go check it out. So, my next oh. time, training with the dogs barking at. Uh, I've got some volunteer the comments are coming in. You like to do it yourself stuff, that's cool. Um, probably about the only do it yourself stuff is I tie a few jigs, and Nick and I, well, we were fishing slinkies, and we were doing that a lot. Um, we make those up in our garage. Nick's kind of gone to other styles of weights now, but I'm still a slinky guy, so. I use stick weights now. We're still kind of a do-it-yourself. Yeah, so I just buy spools of uh, hollow lead and run a wire through it, and then you cut them at sections that you want to fish. I use three different sections, and. Uh, it's a real killer. Hey, how's, hey, how's it going? going, man? Thanks for showing up. Calling We're talking fishing. Here. Yeah, basically it's a pencil lead, but instead of smashing the end of it and punching a hole in it and clipping it to your swivel or something like that, I, uh, I run a, a wire through it and, and put a loop on it. So you got a spinner wire. Like you can make your own spinners. You're talking my language. <laughs> Cerebral killer, are you a steelhead fisherman? That's what we're talking about right now is weights for... Uh, Steelhead fishing. Nope. Nope, but I love fishing. What kind of fishing do you do then? Plastic beads link. Oh, cool. He's got a lot of, yeah, we're gonna have to check out a bunch of your videos later. Mm -hmm. See how you're doing that kind of stuff. We did a, uh, um, we actually did a, um, a DIY video several months ago on how to pour uh, cement weights for sturgeon fishing. You might check that out, Tightline Nation. You might find that interesting. Uh, we, use, we lose a lot of weights when we're still at, or I mean, uh, sturgeon fishing up here. Everything is usually pretty snaggy. 
And so when you're using 8, 10, 12 ounces of lead, it adds up and it gets expensive. Plus, it's not good for the river. So we started pouring concrete weights or cement weights with uh, silicone molds. And those actually work really well. Um, so, yeah. Cerebral says, I live in southeast Georgia on the coast and in the swamp is where I fish. I cast net too. That's cool, man. Mm -hmm. I've never casted nets for, for anything, but what kind of stuff do you usually catch doing that? My biggest salmon is 32 pounds and biggest steelhead is 18 pounds. That's true north angler. Those are, Those are good fish. Yep, that's something to be proud of right there for sure. My biggest steelhead is probably like 12, that one I caught on the sandy. You think? I don't know, 12 or 14 or something. Yeah. Here in Oregon, I've probably caught 30 pound Chinook. Well, that's about it. I'll check that out. I have the Lyman lead weight pot with the nozzle to pour. Okay, so you're pouring your own lead weights too. River Killer, I just smashed you to 950. Nice. Congrats on hitting 950, Cerebral Killer. Mm hmm. Getting close. RTI Power Sports is smashing everybody. If you guys don't recognize each other, then we encourage you to go check each other's channels out, see what they're doing. Do you have a boat? Yeah, we have a small boat. It's a 15 foot smoker craft. An old pro Alaskan. I've got a 40 horse four stroke motor on the back, tiller handle, and then a little six horse kicker we troll around with. Um, a lot of trout trolling, some salmon trolling. Uh, unfortunately, the vibrations uh, get to be kind of bad on the with the kicker motor, so we're trying to figure out how to film better with less vibration in the camera. But uh, but yeah, we've got a boat. I like to use it from time to time. Cerebral Killer says, catches shrimp, speckled sea trout, flounder, whiting, bass, catfish, red, red, red drum, drum. Mm -hmm. black drum, and much more. Man, that sounds like a sounds fun. smorgasbord of everything. Congratulations on that. That sounds like a lot of fun. I'm getting everyone here. Nice. Cool, man. That's really cool about uh, YouTube is... You know, you're learning a lot about what other people are doing on the other side of the country and other places, stuff you've never even heard of. And like, like I said earlier, we're we've learned quite a bit about what the uh, what you East Coast guys are doing for steelhead, and people are finally starting to pay attention to that kind of stuff over here. And if you watch some of the bigger um, fishing channels over here, they're starting to talk about center pins and spawn sacks and that kind of stuff a little bit so it's like we're probably five years behind <laughs> what those guys are doing over there plus we have uh, a lot of guys going over and trolling uh like buzz ramsey he's going over and trolling in the great, great lakes. lakes for salmon and stuff now and learning how to use side planers that's something that we none of us have ever used side planers really over here you monetized yet yeah we got monetized uh just a few weeks ago um it took about 10 days i guess we were under review but um so yeah we were pretty happy about that that was a big milestone for us to we actually hit our watch time a long time ago um we were probably close to seven thousand viewing hours before we finally got a thousand subscribers. subscribers so it felt really good to to just reach that landmark planer boards and uh planer boards that's what i meant what did i say side planers side planers yeah okay yeah planer boards is what i meant tightline nation you're absolutely right dude we can learn from each other that's that's what this is all about i mean when it comes down to it i mean salmon or sand steelhead I mean, things might vary a little bit, but they're going to 
they're gonna bite this and eat the same kind of stuff. Two North Angler, that's awesome to see other people fish different places. Would love to fish West Coast. Yep, that's, uh, I'd love to fish the East Coast. I mean, that'd be great to venture out and try different stuff and see what people are doing. That'd be a lot of fun. True North Angler, congratulations. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Um, we, you know, we were working really hard. Like I said, it, I mean, we're not making anything yet, but it just felt really good to just kind of reach that milestone and see all the hard work and, you know, everything pay off and just kind of check that off of our list. Difference. Yeah, six pound leader. A lot of noodle rods on the East Coast, isn't there? For Kings, we run 12 lurk or carbon. Probably. And they get up to 35 pounds plus. So we're running six pound leaders. For... All right, see you, True North. Thanks for hanging out. Yep, thanks for coming by, man. We really appreciate it. A doorsman is back. Hey, welcome back, buddy. Yeah, the south would be kind of fun. There's some cool stuff down there, too. Well, lots of different kinds of fish out there. It'd be cool to go travel around just to see the different kinds of fish you can catch. Yeah. Different types of fishing. Like those areas where they go out and do, like, redfish and mm -hmm. all those kind of things would be a lot of fun, I think. Yeah, we have our own idea of coastal fishing over here, but the southern and east coast... <laughs> Uh, coastal fishing would be really cool. Some monster bass. Yeah. <laughs> I'm cooking bobcat right now. <laughs> right on. Sweet. Not not a lot of people cook bobcat around here. Yeah. I don't think we can we even shoot them. Yeah, it's it's a extra license and stuff, but yeah. Yeah, not a lot of bobcat hunting going on over here. We have uh, mountain lion cougars. Uh, we can shoot those, but we don't uh, don't see them very often. Caught a nice bull red fishing, pushing 45 inches. Dang. Mm -hmm. That would be a lot of fun. On those videos, those things look like they fight. Yeah. Pretty hard. Are they any good to eat when they get that big? Or is it kind of like... Uh, can't eat them, but they are fun to catch. Can't. There you go. Oh, there you go. I was going to say, when they get a lot of fish, when they get that big, though, they're not worth eating. It's the smaller ones that are usually better. It smells like my house cat. <laughs> Yum. We have cougars, usually 45 years and old and creepy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they sell licenses for those, but it's a different game. <laughs> Like around 28 inches is good, Cerebral Killer says, for redfish mm. eating. That's still a big fish, though. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing you get a lot of meat off of that. Oh, my phone's doing 88%. It's good. not bad. Mm -hmm. Let's see what else we got. Cerebral Killer, what's your biggest bass that you've caught? Pounds wise, I think he said something about catching big bass down there. He says he's, he also said he's got to show us some fishing here. There are limitations on size and bag limits. So far, 6.8 pounds. That's a nice bass, though. Mm -hmm. See you, tight lines. See you, Tide Line Nation. Thanks for coming by, man. We really appreciate it and all the questions. Uh, 6.8 pounds here would be a, definitely be a bragger. Yeah. In Oregon, we don't get a ton of big bass. I think our state record is only like 12 pounds. Um, I've caught... Largemouth? Yeah, largemouth is Small, 12 pounds. Smallmouth, what, 7 Smallmouth pounds? Smallmouth is 7. Yeah. Uh, 
I've caught like a four and a half pound largemouth. That's about it. I've seen five pounders, but not a lot of big bass around here for some reason. Wow, here it surpasses nine on largemouth. Hmm. So what surpasses nine? The record? I think the average. I think Georgia's got the biggest, or did, it was like 20 pounds, four ounces. But I think somebody wrote that a few years back. I caught a catfish with a net. It was 15 pounds? Dang. Hmm. Probably destroyed your net. You don't want to know what the catfish are. We have uh, we have channel catfish here and bullheads and bullheads. That's it. We don't have blues or flatheads mm -hmm. or any of those monster cats that everybody goes out and targets. Saltwater cats are huge. One was landed right off the beach. 150 pounds. pounds. You guys trap? No. Uh, no. We used to. Uh, nice and rats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when we were kids, we kind of, or in high school, we kind of tried trap. Was it me and you, or is that me and Dave? Tried okay. trapping nutria. We have a lot of nutria over here and beaver, but. Uh, Beavers are protected, but the nutrias are kind of the same thing, but they're like a big rat. And they're a nuisance here, so a lot of people trap those. Not a big market for pelts or anything over here, I don't think. Um, can be. Can be. Well, I think I think more people turn in their deer and elk hides for there is a, money than... There is some interest in the trapping around here. We haven't really tried to noodle for that. <laughs> ever gonna noodle for anything sticking my arm in strange places to see if something will latch onto it so i can pull it out it's not on my priority list coyote here is going for 65 bucks yeah i don't know what coyotes are going for we have uh we have a lot of coyotes yeah but I we just shoot them we don't trap them the bobcats i think there's a eastern and a western and i think the eastern ones are more are worth more than the western ones if i remember right i looked into it briefly a handful of years ago just to see what the prices were and stuff but I didn't really go much farther than that hey buddy are you coming back come here what do you want I didn't really no what do you want food you already ate your dinner <laughs> there's no market cerebral says he's got coyotes here but there's no market yeah, I don't think we have a great big market for them here either. And it probably has a lot to do with our, we don't get like hard winters and they don't grow great pelts, I don't think. What's that? Coyotes? Winter times, they got the thicker pelts. You always see them, they're always kind of mangy looking though. Mm. Great target shooting though. Yeah. Cerebral, that's kind of what we do too. I mean, when we're out hunting and we see them, we usually shoot them. Um, they tear up our deer population. Come here, buddy. Come on. Get your right there. <laughs> what is it that you want? Hmm? You're going for over an hour now. Yep, we are going for how much longer you want to go? Hmm. I always find a way to ruin my hunt. Yeah. Coyotes usually do have a way to ruin your hunt. They're out yipping and howling, and it's, it's going to push stuff around. And now we have to worry about wolves. Yeah. So our wildlife management thought it would be a superb idea to reintroduce wolves in our area. And so now a lot of the farmers and ranchers are getting their cattle tore up. But... Uh, <laughs> 
that's something else to look for because wolves are hunters. And you've heard, we've already heard stories about hunters, uh, elk hunters and stuff getting hunted down with packs of wolves. Cerebral says, I had a nice buck in my scope and suddenly those darn party crashers howl through. So I abandoned my deer hunt and hunted coyotes. <laughs> yep, that's a good way to get rid of them. What time is it? What time are we going to fix dinner? Uh, it's soon. Quarter to five. Quarter to five. Oh, you want to wrap it up then? Yeah, probably should. All right, guys, I think we're going to probably wrap this up. We're going on 71 minutes, so... Traps are we got to get dinner going here pretty soon. We're feeding everybody. Traps are frozen. That's no good. Mm -hmm. Cerebral, thanks for coming by, man. Thanks for all the great questions. We really yeah. appreciate visiting with you and learning about what you're doing. Nice to see you too. And uh, we'll uh, hopefully we'll do this again and get to meet and visit with more people too. It's nice to get on here and and take some questions and interact with people and yeah not just through comments and stuff so outdoorsman it's been a it's been a pleasure to talk with you too and hope we can get into some of that trapping stuff more down the road good luck with that hope your traps unfreeze pretty soon yeah that'd be good <laughs> so all right guys well we're gonna shut this off then and get back to the family stuff so take care and thank you everybody for coming by and you guys have a good weekend all right see you